you are watching this week in MLS. Um, yeah, so Kaka, introing the show now. Caitlin, Not bad. We are big time. Well, you are. You guys. I don't know where I don't know where we go from here. Well, you gave him a donut. I heard at. I did. All -Star. Sure did. We shared a moment. That's it was cool. it was special. See, I'm not all about the stars, you know. I would like to get some of the less heralded players to mm -hmm. intro our show. Mm -hmm. Marlon Harrison, where you at? Can you hook it up? If with you an can intro? get Kaka though. Baggio, who's sitting. That's that's where you go. Uh, who else do I want? Connor Laid. I, I hope he's all right. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. We, I want some of the more, you know, some of the role player type of guys. Sure. We'll work on that. All Caitlin. about the stars. We'll bring them Suzanne. donuts too. Um, plenty to talk about this week, and there is a lot of MLS action. We're going to start in LA. What a finish there! After falling behind two the Galaxy would storm back in the final 15 minutes, capped off by Ashley Cole's first goal of the Galaxy to end this one in a 2-2 draw. Um, quite the comeback for the Galaxy, Kaylin, but in our Facebook Live uh, session that we did before before the show, one of the, one of the fans asked, what's up with uh, the Red Bulls conceding late goals? What's happening there? Yeah, well, this one, it's hard to be too critical of them. They went down, uh, they had used three subs, mm -hmm. all three subs yeah. by, the, by the early in the second half. Uh, BWP came out. Um, then they also, Connor Lade went down to injury. That did not look good. Didn't, I hope he's all yeah. right. Um, and then of course, Perinel goes down as well on the tackle from Loren Lorenowitz. Uh, Jesse Marsh, not happy, he gets tossed from the game. Yeah. You know, I think he's made his feelings clear now how he feels about the referees and how they're treating his team in particular. Um, they let a lot go. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm going to pull a Dax McCarty here okay. and just say okay. uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, credit to the Galaxy. I do think they deserve some credit. Uh, the subs they made came sure. in and made a difference. But I also give the Red Bulls, I think there are positives to take out of this. Mm -hmm. um, um, Sean Davis was great. He got a he goal. He got his first goal. You could see the, the team has yeah. been talking about him as far as his talent and ability. He's able to start to show yeah. out a bit. Sasha Kleshton as well. That guy just continues. 13 to assists on the season yeah. already. You know, and I, I saw somebody on Twitter, I can't remember who, but said, let's take a moment to realize Sasha Kleshton's not a national team player right now. <laughs> right. He's not in the pool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so bizarre to me. and. I hope he, that can change. You know, I, I never say never. Chris Wondolowski is a guy that, through his statistics and playing later on in his career, mm -hmm. has convinced uh, to get some time. He played in the World Cup, of course. Yep. Um, I'm hoping that that trajectory can still be there for Sasha and, and really maybe a couple other guys too. He has earned it. He has earned it. All right, well, let's move to the Eastern Conference and take a look at the table. NYCFC remains at the top after settling for the scoreless draw in San Jose, but look who is right on their heels, Toronto. And it's safe to say that they have the hottest player in MLS right now is Jovinko, had his second hat trick of the year, his fourth overall. Um, it's, it's starting to get hard to describe words. Uh, for this guy, because he's just, and it, it's interesting too, because he, he had a bit of a lull this season, and now yeah. he started scoring goals, and it's like the floodgates are open. Yeah, eight or nine games, I believe, without a goal. That, that's a long drought for him, but you can see when he gets hot, he scores <laughs> in bunches. He's got two hat tricks now yeah. in the span of four games. It's just crazy. That's 15, not bad. 15 goals on the and, season? And the way yeah. he's doing it, it's not just that he's getting tap ins mm -hmm. or. These are quality goals. Like, yes, yeah. top-notch yeah. quality goals, yeah. The technique to be able to kind of come around it um, and hit it with that bend to the far post. There's that cool angle with Kai Kamara kind of trying to come across it. Mm -hmm. and he just bends it right in that far corner. Um, he's been spectacular. This Toronto FC team, though, if you take a step back, uh -huh. they've now won three games in a week. Yeah. And they're shooting up the table, um, buzzing with confidence. Josie Altidore has now come in to the team. He's really a super sub now mm -hmm. and been fantastic in that role as well. I, I, I really think this is a team to watch to be able to make a run in these. Don't sleep on Toronto FC. All right, let's take a look back at the table. One team on a bit of a slide is the Union. A late goal by Steve Birnbaum forced Philly to settle for just a point against DC. And now they have a four match winless streak. But Kaylin, um, I know you were intrigued by the acquisitions of Bedoya and Charles Davies this week. What are your thoughts on uh, Charles? We're going official on Charles Davies. On I like these, that. On these uh, up, acquisitions. Um, you, how do you feel? about it. I, I think they've made the best acquisitions in MLS midseason. So Alejandro Bedoya is a player yeah. for me that's really been unsung with the national team. One of the more technical um, and uh, I would say intelligent players on the team. I think he's going to fit right into that system. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's actually probably going to play a little bit more advanced than we've seen him even with. Um, you see guys like Jermaine Jones uh, who have been playing in Europe come over and take a more advanced role in MLS. I think Bedoya will probably do a pretty similar thing here. Mm -hmm. um, but then you add Charlie as well. You know, he scores goals, playoff experience, great in the locker room. Um, 
I think he's going to be a big time player for them in the playoffs. And when you just look at this roster in yeah. general, I think you see a, a, that Jim Curtin and Ernie Stewart have really set this team up for the future mm -hmm. as well. Uh, they've gone from being a surprise team to a contender to now really making a run to being a team that can be there for years to compete. Sure. They've, got Jay, they've got Andre Blake in the back, yeah. Keegan Rosenberry. Um, they've got some nice versatile pieces, Gaddis, Craval, um, then Pontius was like a guy, they kind of picked up off the scrap heap mm -hmm. in DC. People have forgotten about him. He's had a career resurgence. Um, CJ Sapong. So you look at all the, Il Signo, Albert, you're looking at all these guys now. Um, oh, and Maurice Tadu. That's going to be another mid-season acquisition for them. Mm -hmm. I've now named everybody on the <laughs> roster, but I really like the way this team is set know up. Know your MLS players <laughs> yeah. by Caitlin Carr. I need to go to a Philly game. Um, but yeah, they're set up oh, for the future. Oh gosh, uh, P.S. Chris Holding, that was for you in Facebook Live. He wanted us to talk okay. about the Philly acquisition. So go I think Philly. you, I think you handled that uh, yeah. beautifully. All right, Out West, FC Dallas and Colorado remain one and two in the table, respectively. With Dallas off from MLS action and Colorado picking up the two nil win over Vancouver, but the team that is quietly hanging around is RSL. Um, Kaylin, is this a team that, that people need to pay attention to as we make? make no way. The they should just push. worry about the Galaxy and <laughs> the Red Bulls because those are the only two teams you're, that you're, really. You're poking the nah, bear. I'm just kidding. You're poking uh, the no, bear. No, Real Salt Lake is a team that people need to pay attention to. Javi Morales is a guy that you know you talk about Burrito mm -hmm. and Plata and some of these new signings, but don't forget about Javi and, and you, he showed his quality over the week. Um, that left-footed finish where yeah. he kind of cuts it and puts it off the post is good. Chicago, obviously, a tough one for them, but uh, they'll be looking towards Tuesday, getting ready for this Open Cup. Absolutely. That's a, you know, I've won the Open Cup for the Chicago Fire, and um, I know the club puts a lot into mm -hmm. that. The fans care about it. I'm rooting for Chicago. I hope that the fans show up in, in droves and, and support the team. Um, we should talk about Nick Romando, too. Oh, yeah. Because this guy, 181 wins now, most most in MLS. Um, he he has just, I feel like he's been like quietly spectacular. He's been consistent, yeah. too. He's been consistently one of the top goalkeepers in MLS through multiple eras. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's really put himself up there in discussion of best MLS goalkeepers of all time, probably have to be number one, actually. Yeah. Um, and let's give credit to Kevin Hartman, Elgato. I saw sure. him at uh, the All-Star Game, and he'll be a part of an upcoming Goalkeeper Week that we're doing here at MLSsoccer.com. Oh, boy. It's be pretty cool to Goalkeeper see. Week. Yeah. I like it. Give the goalkeeper some love. They need so. some love, yeah, too. Yeah, but congrats to Nick. Awesome. All right, well, as we look at the table, uh, look who has finally found themselves above the red line. A week after Portland lost to SKC, they came home, defeated them 3-0. Um, Kalen, can Caleb Porter and the Timbers continue this surge, kind of keep riding riding the wave of momentum to, in that playoff push? Well, they, they in, on the positive side, they do have a guy named Diego Valeri. Oh, that guy. <laughs> so you talk about quality, so you talk about players that can make a difference yeah. in tight matches. Javinko, we obviously have spoken about at length. Yeah. Um, Valeri's right up there <clears throat> as far as his technique. With, the way he took that finish, um, he t comes across it. Just, it really kind of comes at him quick too, uh -huh. off the bounce. Yeah. And then he just like comes across it, puts it into that far corner. Mm -hmm. That was that was really nice. And this series, and uh, I think we may see again in the playoffs. Uh -huh. um, we saw it last year, and this was kind of a playoff field. That would it. be fun. There was they they were there last week, then they come back here. Um, Three zero, probably not really reflective of the game. It okay. was it was a lot tighter, um, a lot more heated and, mm -hmm. and tightly contested than that. But give Portland credit. They are beasts at home, and uh, I think they're 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 the champs until someone comes and takes them. All right, Kaylin, time to talk about our favorite plays. Yeah, what, of the what, week. Were, what were yours? Um, you mentioned it that that Diego Valeri goal mm. was just special, right on a half volley. He makes it look so easy. That is that is not easy to do. Ever at since all. he went to Portland, hung out with Jake Leeson for your upcoming show. I, plug your I've show. Got plug it, plug it, plug I've got some love. I've got some love. BTW. Yeah. it's um, coming. It's but coming. But you've been going. You've been leaning heavily Portland since then. It's. I had such a great experience there. But Diego Valeri, come on. Yeah. The guy. The guy is so special. Okay. Um, and that was just a beautiful strike. I'm so. gonna give the Pacific. Northwest some love and, uh -huh. and go my favorite play. Uh, well, I want to pick a couple. Okay. But from the Seattle game, um, Jordan Morris is two assists. Yeah. I really like that unselfish play. Clint Dempsey gets a hat trick, but Jordan Morris really was the impetus behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, Lodero was fantastic. He's so good. You know, he he allows um, he allows Clint to be able to push up. He doesn't have to come back and search for the ball as much. And Jordan Morris to do what he does best, which is to be on that mm -hmm. back shoulder, really leading the line. Um, 
and also give credit to Christian Rodan. He's a young player that yeah. they've committed to and really given a ton of time. You can see him mm -hmm. starting to really pay dividends. He's got a goal already, but his assist in this one to Jordan Morris, it's a first time ball. He just senses the Orlando City back line is a little bit high. Um, they, they are gonna have to figure out a little bit of where their pressure versus uh, back line is. They're a little disjointed there. Christ will figure that out. But give credit to uh, Roldan and Jordan Morris, the two young guys making the difference. In Big Seattle. boost for Seattle, yeah. too. They needed that 3-1 win. Good for you. Um, all right, now we are going to get to some of your questions. Earlier today, we had our little Facebook Live session, and Joel Bouchard wants to know, Kaylin, do you think Montreal can finish first in the East? Hmm. Joel. Um, let's, let's. I don't think they need to. Yeah. I don't really see. I, I think they can. The East is pretty wide open. Um, I still think the Red Bulls, depending on whether they can get healthy, and um, they've had some bad luck with that. Yes, they have. Can, can, I thought they were a team primed to make a run. Mm -hmm. Toronto FC, as we mentioned, has has a lot left in the tank. NYCFC. And what, yeah, I mean, it's so gonna, it's, it is open, but do you think we're going to see a lot of sort of shifting? Yeah, throughout yeah. as it goes. I think that's the way it's going to be yeah. throughout the East. But uh, I don't think Montreal needs to be. There are some teams I think need to be near the top of the table. Um, I think this is a team that's probably better suited to the playoff format. Mm -hmm. um, experienced side, some older players. Um, but they brought in the Marcuso guy, mm -hmm. and he, he got a really nice goal against the Dynamo, who I must say were a bit wasteful in this one on the road. Um, and I think he's been a, a nice pickup for them, especially to kind of spell drugs right here and there. Good, awesome. So there you go, Joel. Thank you for uh, for asking the question. And guys, I'm not sure you... if I answered that. I kind of ducked it. I, I know. I, I thought that was yeah. that was fair. Okay, thank you. You totally totally hit nice. on it. Um, but guys, we want you to keep commenting. Hit us up in the uh, the comments section on MLSsoccer.com on YouTube. Yeah. All of these social platforms that we're pushing this. And this I've been show on. I've been responding to the comments. So on YouTube. I know. So so we have been <laughs> commenting, and some guy you responded, and some guy was like, "This is a fake account." Yeah. I was like, "No, that's actually Kaylin getting in." there. Yeah. Oh, no. So it's it's a real thing. If you I, see our names, it's us, man. That's right. Yeah. I slide in. He sli <laughs> you had to get that I'm in there. Um, <laughs> um, so Kaylin, Kaylin's ditching me uh, for the next next two weeks. There's going to be there's going to be somebody else sitting. Yeah. Sitting if you want to take spot. my job, give me um, some, you know, yeah, send we, a video in to our social media. If you want to audition, if you want to audition for Kaylin's job, send us send us a little video, minute, minute and a half. Yeah. Tell us why Either you analyzing a game, a goal, a I, moment. Or I can't just, do this by myself. And this guy is, you know, he's off doing the movement. So, you know. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm going to hang out with Jay Demerit next week. It, he's going to Vancouver. It's going to be great. Yeah. I can't wait to see these episodes. Yeah, it It'll be, be awesome. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you stay tuned to MLSsoccer.com. And uh, I will see you next week. Him, not so much. Yeah. Take my job. Mm-hmm.